Well, hi again, everybody. My name is Greg Anderson, and today I want to talk a little bit more about my experience with solar panels on the roof of my house. I realize one thing I haven't gone into great detail about is exactly what they did on top of the house and also inside the attic space. In fact, when they finished installing the stuff on the roof of the house, I was so excited about looking at that and looking at the inverter back here that I didn't even think for a long, long time about, well, what exactly does it look like in the attic now that they've done that? So uh, I finally did see that when I had to do something else in the attic. But I want to just warn you because, you know, safety first. Don't go into your attic unless you've got a very good reason to do so and you really know what you're doing up there. Attics are not built for people to be walking around in. There's all kinds of uh, different pieces of wood and whatever support going all different directions. You got to be careful with your step or you're going to maybe put your foot through the ceiling of your living room, damage your, uh, your living room and damage yourself, injure yourself. So I don't want you to do that. There's splinters up there, there's nails sticking through, you know, when the roofers install the roof, they might put extra nails in that don't exactly go where they're supposed to go, and they're just sticking there. And you know, if you're a little bit taller and the roof is a little bit shorter, you could poke yourself on those exposed nails. And I just don't want any of that to happen to you. So that's why I'm going to show you what they did inside my attic, so you don't have to think about what they did inside your attic. Now, I should mention that a long time before they actually came to do the work on the roof, someone from the company came and looked inside the attic just to make sure everything was in order up there, make sure there was nothing that needed to be repaired before, uh, before the solar panel installation was done, making sure that uh, things inside the attic were sound, that the roof was strong enough to hold people and to hold equipment. And so everything checked out and then they decided to proceed. So when they did, first thing they did on the outside, they measured very carefully. I was very impressed with the professionalism of the crew. They put yellow tape all around the yard and made sure nobody was going to be, you know, around the perimeter of the house where anything might accidentally fall and, and hurt somebody. So they're very careful about that. Uh, they measured very carefully before they placed anything on the roof. And first they put down some brackets, maybe some railings, sorts of things that the panels would be mounted to. So uh, they did all that and I know they were very careful to make sure that things lined up and it, they didn't look like they were crooked or something compared to the other lines on the roof. Okay, so uh, and, and anytime they put a hole in the roof to put a screw or a bolt or they had to actually bore a hole to put some of the electrical connections through, they made sure that everything was well sealed and we haven't had any trouble with things leaking when there's rain and snow on the roof. Everything's just been fine that way. So again, I was very impressed with how, how well they were doing it. And, and some poor soul had to go up inside the attic. And uh, that first installation day was like the, the first day of summer. It was in June and it was very hot in there. And somebody was up there going around, professional who knew what he was doing, but he was very uncomfortable. But he didn't, he didn't complain about it. He just did his job and that was great. So, okay, so anyway, on the top of the roof, they put all those brackets and, and railings and things down and they mounted the, the, the panels to them. Now, the panels themselves are electrically connected to each other. So there's some cables, wires, whatever, that go from one panel to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next, so that everything in that group is then wired together. And then wires come off of that group into a junction box that's mounted to the surface of the roof. So uh, I, I see a few of those. Now, if we had a different style of roof, they may have been able to put all the panels in maybe one or two sections. As it stands, because there are so many different angles on our roof, they had to divide it into several sections. So each section of panels has its own little junction box then next to that group on the surface of the roof. So uh, that's just how that worked out. And so each place where, that, where there's a junction box mounted to the roof, there has to be some sort of hole that goes down uh, inside the attic. And so we have those at each of those locations. Now, as I said, all of the wires under the panels, under the sets of panels, go into the junction box, then inside the house. Uh, then, you know, inside the, the attic there, they've got flexible conduit, and they put the wires inside the flexible conduit. And, uh, well, that looks like this. So they had different sizes depending on, you know, the thickness or the gauge of the wire that they had to put inside. So when it was kind of at the beginning of the electrical wiring, uh, they could have a, a smaller one. And when it got down closer to the end, where it was going to come out 
to the inverter, then they had to use a, sort of a, you know, a larger uh, flexible conduit to, to hold that wire. But everything worked out just, just fine. They knew what they were doing. It was fine. So wh what I'll say is just as the, uh, the panels in each group have to be kind of wired to each other, then that will go inside the attic to the next group of panels into that junction box and then added to that, then back out again to the next junction box and to the next junction box until at the end of it all, it came, uh, they, they, they routed it right to the edge of uh, the roof here in the attic. And then they put one hole uh, at the edge of the attic and up in the eaves here and had that come down in a piece of rigid conduit that then runs down the side of uh, the wall into the inverter. So that's how that worked. And, and you can see uh, up in my attic there how they've laid out the flexible conduit and in places they've kind of zip tied it in place and made sure everything's great there. I mean, nothing rattles when the wind blows or anything like that. Everything looks really great up there. Uh, again, don't go in your attic. Another thing about your attic, it probably has lousy lighting. I don't think there's been great lighting in an attic ever since Greg Brady moved upstairs. So don't expect... <laughs> And, it, and it's dusty too. I mean, you're, you're breathing in, I don't know what it is, but uh, you go up in the attic and for like the rest of the day, you're just Ugh. So don't do it. I, I showed you what's up there. And then it's just a couple wires that come down in that uh, rigid conduit and all the wiring that happens here outside the house with, uh, with the inverter, that's, that's all taken care of. And I can go into some detail about that in another video. But uh, again, if you have any curiosity about what's on the roof, what's in the roof, now you don't have to go up there and do anything dangerous because you've seen it here. And I'm sure the installation is very similar uh, with whoever you might be working with to get solar panels on your house. And it'll be, it'll be great, it'll be fun. Homemade electricity, it just, it just makes me happy.